Taylor Swift. <laughs> Who ever thought you would hear about Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey, let's not forget Travis, on the Ron Brooks show? I mean, this is very unusual. I have to admit that my knowledge of Taylor Swift is primarily of her uh, business success. Uh, I'm not familiar with her music. I, I, I doubt that I would like her music, uh, but I'm, I'm just not familiar with it. I probably heard it. It's probably everywhere, right? So I probably heard it at some point, somewhere, somewhere. Uh, I've seen pictures of her in costume and, and just pictures of her because she's everywhere. You can't not see Taylor Swift, uh, Taylor Swift if, if, you're in this, uh, if you're in this world. Uh, in uh, reading the media or, or on Twitter or anywhere, really, she is, she is, um, she is everywhere, uh, and uh, she's a billionaire. She's the biggest thing in music, from a financial perspective, possibly ever. Her tour, which is global, it is sold out everywhere. It's on a scale of no tour that's ever been before. I mean, there was Beatlemania, but this is on a completely different level uh, what Taylor Swift is achieving, what she's doing, uh, you know, from a, from, a business, uh, from a business and entertainment perspective. Uh, she is the biggest musician, artist, however you want to call her, uh, in the world today, the richest. Her, um, her, uh, it's not just that she... Uh, her albums sell. She's had, I, I don't know what the numbers are, huge number of albums at the top of the list, um, a, a huge number of songs, uh, you know, at, at the top of every every list of songs, uh, titanium albums, whatever they call them these days. She's had it. She, she is, uh, you know, this a jaw-dropping success. It's it's hard to imagine. I mean, she's, she's bigger than Madonna ever was. She's bigger than... I don't know Beyonce or, or or any of any of the modern uh, singers out there. Exactly what made her so successful, we'll get to in a minute. Uh, but but she's huge, and uh, there's nobody as big as her in the world uh, today. Uh, and and uh, what complicates the story, of course. <laughs> I don't know what to make of the story. This is the funny, stupid, ridiculous, idiotic. But it's a story, so we cover it here in the Iran Book Show, and I think it does reveal something uh, really um, reveal something really sad about American politics. But anyway, uh, she is dating uh, the uh, uh, Travis Kelsey. Travis Kelsey is the what is he? The uh, um, he is he plays <laughs> he plays for the Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, he is a uh, God, I forget the name of the position. Anyway, uh, he, he is on the tight end. Thank you. He's a tight end on the, uh, on the Kansas City Chiefs. He's one of the great tight ends, from what I've read, one of the great tight ends in NFL history. Uh, he has won, I think, two Super Bowls already and is in the Super Bowl coming up, right? So you've got uh, there's Travis Kelsey uh, uh, in the Super Bowl. You've got his girlfriend, uh, the biggest star on the planet, Literally, uh, she will be flying in from Singapore, I think, on a private jet, uh, you know, and only because she'll basically be doing a show and watching the Super Bowl in the same day. But since she's traveling over the dateline, it won't be the same day, but technically it'll be the same day. Uh, and, and, and she's going to be there in the stands. And, uh, you know, this has brought a whole new generation of new football fans to football because all the all the... The girls who who, who adore uh, uh, Taylor Swift, they call it Swifties, are going to be watching the game and, and watching Taylor and Kelsey. It's kind of this romantic uh, fairy tale. Uh, he's a good-looking, uh, you know, football player. He's younger than she is, I'm pretty sure. We'll get to that, too, in a little while, kind of, kind of the insanity of the whole thing. But... Uh, Anyway, you'd think this is just, a, okay, an all-American story. An incredibly successful entertainer, a, makes a billion dollars, is, is one of the richest people in the planet, and, and people love her and adore her, and they buy her merchandise, they buy everything she touches. It, it, it's one of those stories that you hear about in America constantly, but just she's, 
just taken it into into a new dimension. It's just done being more successful than anybody else. And it, supposedly we love success in this country, particularly uh, particularly uh, conservatives claim they love success. In this country, they love entrepreneurs. She's definitely an entrepreneur. She's done something few people have done before. And uh, yeah, I mean, this is a fantastic story, uh, which uh, we should all be happy for. And then we've got one of the best football players in America. And football, after all, is the American sport. Nobody else really plays football. It's, it's, it's uh, you know, it's the sport of, of the working class. It is the sport of... Uh, uh, Sunday, sitting on the sofa watching the game. Everybody who who in America doesn't love football. I mean, football is America. Uh, and you've got one of the great football players, maybe of all time, suddenly in his position, falling in love with uh, one of the most successful entertainers in all of history. She's a billionaire. He's only worth probably tens of millions of dollars. So uh, that is a little bit of a role reversal in terms of gender. But uh, there you go. You'd think everybody would be crazy about this. Uh, uh, you know, ultimately, uh, uh, you know, Taylor Swift is a, um, she's a woman. Uh, she dresses sexy. She, uh, people, uh, the girls who go to her performances dress like women. Uh, she's not trans. She's not pretending to be something she's not. She's not confused. She's not psychologically problematic. She's she's good old a woman who's uh, pretty sexy and, uh, uh, you know, she has adoring fans who are mostly uh, young women who I think, uh, you know, and, and here it is. She's, she's a model of entrepreneurship and capitalism and making money and being successful and uh, uh, girls go over there, go to, go to a contest dressed like girls. You think, you think people would be excited about this, particularly, again, conservatives would be excited about, about this phenomenon. Now, she has a weakness. Everybody has a weakness, right? She has a weakness, after all. Uh, human beings do have original sin. And, and, and she, her weakness is that in 2020, she endorsed Biden. And, and here is where it gets pretty crazy, right? She endorsed Biden. She's not a crazy lefty. She's left. But she doesn't act left. She's obviously acting capitalist. She endorsed Biden. That is unacceptable. That cannot be tolerated. And uh, so over the last few weeks, the Make America Great Again universe has gone apoplectic over uh, Taylor Swift. She is a, a you know, we'll, we'll talk about what she is, but, you know, let me just give you a few examples, right? I mean, first of all, it's clear, uh, Mike uh, uh, Crispy, a, uh, a congressional candidate who lost, luckily, uh, Mike Crispy tweets, the NFL is totally rigged for Kansas City Chiefs. Taylor Swift, Mr. Pfizer, we'll get to Mr. Pfizer, Travis Kelsey, all to spread Democratic propaganda. Calling it now, KC wins, goes to Super Bowl. This is just before the, uh, the, the uh, uh, you know, what is it, the previous game that led to the Super Bowl. Swift comes out at the halftime show and endorses Joe Biden and Kelsey at midfield. It's all about, it's all been an op since day one. Now, uh, Kelsey, uh, uh, Travis Kelsey, they hate Travis Kelsey. I mean, he's an all-American football player. He's like, you know, solid, he's, he's the real thing, good-looking, white guy, played football, making, making, making money, being successful, winning Super Bowls. Again, you'd think, you'd think that he was, he'd be adored. No, 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 no. Why? He actually participated in, uh, in a advertising campaign to encourage people to get, God forbid, I mean, this is like the devil, but uh, to get vaccinated. He actually, actually participated in a campaign to encourage people to get vaccinated, and therefore he is part of the, 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 you know, the evil, whatever, fill in the blank. He is the agent of the devil. He also, by the way, and, and this is, you know, hard, I, I don't know, I don't know how you want to evaluate him, but he also uh, made a commercial, right? Made a commercial uh, for, um, for Bud Light. Yep, yep. Um, 
I don't want to get into the discussion of vaccines. Vaccines are science. Uh, anybody who doubts the vaccines and the data uh, is ignorant at best, uh, but probably not just ignorant. Uh, it's probably a lot worse than that. Evan Rogers is just a mindless idiot. Uh, I mean, he's a good quarterback. He's a great quarterback. But when it comes to pretty much everything else, he's a mindless idiot. And, and the fact that he has Atlas Shrugged in the back doesn't redeem him from the fact that he's not that smart uh, when it comes to anything other than football. Uh, but that's okay. Uh, that's okay. You guys, uh, uh, you guys uh, uh, go along with the, with the vaccine mythology of the right. Uh, this is Vivek. Uh, Vivek. Vivek writes uh, tweets. You know, Vivek is trying to stay relevant, of course. Tweets, I wonder who's going to win the Super Bowl next month. And I wonder if there's a major presidential endorsement coming from artificially, culturally propped up couple this fall. Just some wild speculation over here. Let's see how it ages over the next eight months. <laughs> so um, Vivek is now playing into this idea, oh, it's all rigged. Uh, this is uh, this is all uh, this is all just a democratic conspiracy uh, uh, to uh, uh, you know to win the Super Bowl and use it as a platform for uh, advertising uh, Joe Biden as uh, as uh, president. I mean, Joe Biden campaign is pretty sophisticated. You've got to admit it. Unbelievable sophistication. Here is Lava Luma. Lava Luma is a loon, a complete loon, uh, although Scott probably likes her. So, uh, but uh, Lava Luma says uh, the Democrats, Taylor Swift election interference psych, psych off, up is happening in the open. It's not a coincidence that current and former Biden, former Biden administration officials are propping up Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey. They're going to use Taylor Swift as the poster child for their pro-abortion Go TV campaign. Um, I, I don't. What, what do you say about what do you say about this? Uh, it it just it gets loonier and loonier. But 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 you know this is loony stuff. I don't know. Fox is is pretty bad. But but you'd think that Fox maybe would be would be you know a somewhat san sanity, a little bit of sanity, maybe not completely nuts uh, in uh, in the Republican world. Uh, but again, it, it, Taylor Swift, by all accounts, self-made woman, self-made, unbelievable success, but. Republicans can't accept that somebody's a self-made, unbelievable success and still supports Joe Biden. So here is, here is Jesse somebody, Jesse Waters' explanation for what is going on with Taylor Swift, because it just can't be. It can't be that somebody endorses Biden and then goes on and, and becomes a billionaire and, and, and even dates a football player who happens to be in the Super Bowl. Something very suspicious is going on here, people. Wake up. Wake up. The world is being taken over. Here is Jesse Waters, who is just a straight up Fox guy. Well, Taylor Swift's the biggest star in the world. Sorry, Gutfeld. She's been blanketed across the sports media entertainment atmosphere. The New York Times just speculated she's a lesbian. And last year's tour broke Ticketmaster. New York Times just speculated she's a lesbian. Um, why is that relevant in this context? Is that just a, a slam against her? The fact that she's a lesbian makes her bad in some way? Probably. Uh, uh, for, this is Fox after all. Um, and uh, so... Uh, uh, so here we go. Um, she's a lesbian, maybe. Maybe she's a lesbian. So that just reinforces the idea that her affair with Kelsey is, is all propped up. It's not real. It's all pretend. A tour that's revenue tops the GDP of 50 countries. I mean, I like her music. She's all right. But I mean, have you ever wondered why or how she blew up like this? Well, around four years ago, the Pentagon Psychological Operations Unit floated turning Taylor Swift into an asset during a NATO meeting. What kind of asset? A PSYOP for combating online misinformation. Listen. <laughs> Can you believe this? So, so, so she's a PSYOP uh, for combating online information. She's, she blew up because the Pentagon wanted her to blow up. They have been propping her up. They made it possible. They, I mean, this is Fox. 
This is not some crazy channel. We'll get to the crazy channel in a minute. This is Fox. Now, here's the presentation from the Pentagon, right? This is a presentation at some summit, you know, some conference, public conference, by the way, public conference, not some secret uh, uh, hidden away operation. Notice the woman making the presentation. She can barely speak. But, but uh, it, you know, this is the Pentagon's secret operation to take over America by using Taylor Swift uh, as a, a psyop. You came in here wanting to understand how you just go out there and counter an information operation. Well, the Please. idea is that social influence can help, uh, can help uh, encourage or uh, promote behavior change, so potentially as like a peaceful information operation. I include Taylor Swift in here because she's, um, you know, she's a fairly influential online person. I don't know if you've heard of her. Yeah, that's real. Yeah, it's real. But she's like a kid. She can barely speak. Um, it, 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 this is a high-level Pentagon operation run by a kid who's making this public. All she said is use Taylor Swift as an example of how such a thing could happen. I mean, really? But he doesn't stop there. The Pentagon PSYOP unit pitched NATO on turning Taylor Swift into an asset. Is that what you saw? I didn't online. see NATO being pitched this of anything. This is nothing new. In the 1950s, the government strong-armed Louis Armstrong into doing propaganda tours across Africa. Exactly the same. The CIA did the same thing with jazz singer Nina Simone, except they did it without her really knowing. In the 70s, Nixon That's enlisted Elvis in up. his war on drugs. He gave the king a badge and named him a covert federal law enforcement agent. Wow. Michael Jackson was tapped by Reagan, using his song Beat It and his public service campaigns against teen drinking and driving. Covertly, I take persuading it. Persuading minors not to drink. Anyway, so is Swift a front for a covert political agenda? Primetime obviously has no evidence. If we did, we'd share it. No evidence. No evidence. And yet, this is a five-minute story on it. How do you do a five-minute story on something that you have no evidence about? And you're willing to admit that you have no evidence about? This is journalism? This is amateur, not 101. This is nobody, I mean, it's just unbelievable. Unbelievable. All this is, is to get this idea of a PSYOP out there. No evidence. Just stick it out there so that people start talking about it. So it creates online chatter. This is like the, the, the lowest. And everybody's talking about this, by the way. Now, you know, everybody online is talking about this. It's become a huge story. Off of what? Off of no evidence? And off of just rampant, ridiculous, stupid speculation? that should be just a joke on Saturday Night Live, but is now people are selling this as, as real. The, this world is, is literally insane. This world is nuts. And, and this, is, this is on the right, where now everything is political. Truth doesn't matter. Reality doesn't matter. Sanity doesn't matter. All that matters is who's on what side, who's on which team. All right, we got to do one more of these uh, because this this one is this one is precious. She is amazing. This is OAN. So granted, this is a marginal right wing uh, uh, news show, uh, but uh, but but the, the, these are, these are this is MAGA. This is Make America Great Again world. This is the 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 foundations of of Trump's uh, supporters. These are the people who flood the media with this uh, craziness and nonsense and who dominate, who dominate his, uh, his supporters. Um, this is why uh, this country is going to hell uh, if he wins, because it only emboldens these nutcases, these completely insane people. Now, this is the difference. They're insane people on the left. They're complete wackos on the left. Completely insane. Completely insane. You know, all the, all the um, uh, woke and the uh, DEI and the, you know, uh, uh, but even, but, but, you know, and, and, and the pro-Hamas. and I mean, there's, there's an unlimited number of insane people on the left. But they're not, they're not going to be president of the United States, and they're not this close to the president of the United States. They're marginalized even by their own people. This is at the heart of it. 
This is at the heart today of the Republican Party. Hey, right, watch this. This is a classic. Pop star celebrity sweetheart joins forces with a top dog in the NFL, playing for the team that's going to the Super Bowl. I mean, let's be real here. This is bread and circuses on steroids. Major League Sports in and of itself is nothing but a psyop. Get kids plugged into the cycle of going to public indoctrination camps, playing sports for their school, and going to games. Many end up devoting their entire childhood to competing in various sports, Isn't that awesome? only to be cut from the team, at which point they become brainwashed into supporting professional teams because they know their dreams of becoming a pro athlete will probably never happen. So then they become obsessed with some grown man who gets paid millions of dollars every year to throw a ball around while promoting poison death shots and child slave labor through various brand deals and endorsements. So sad. Imagine being so brainwashed by sports, you actually show up to your team stadium to shovel snow for free so you can watch a bunch of grown men who are overpaid tackle each other. <laughs> God, American used to love sports, right? People on the right in particular used to love sports, particularly football. What has happened? This country's gone insane. At least some people in this country have gone completely insane. Scott Walker. Scott Walker was the governor of Wisconsin. He was a good guy. I like Scott Walker. I would have voted for president if he'd lasted beyond, I think, the Iowa, the Iowa caucuses whenever it was that he ran. And I think it was the same year that, uh, that Mitt Romney ultimately was the candidate. Scott Walker was, was good. He, bro he broke the unions in, in Wisconsin. He was a tough guy. He was a good governor. He tweets this with a picture of, of Travis Kelsey. He, he tweets... Funny how liberals are interested in the opinion of a white man living in the 1% who does work for Big Pharma, an insurance company. Oh, my God, an insurance company. And Big Pharma, of course, Big Pharma, we know how evil Big Pharma is, an insurance company and a business accused of using sweatshops. She also mentioned sweatshops because he must have a clothing line or something that probably is accused of being sweatshops. Everybody uses sweatshops. Most of the clothes you wear were produced in sweatshops. I, you know... This is Scott Walker tweeting, and who has a girlfriend who is going to fly around the world in a private jet to watch him play. And what's the problem with that? Why is that wrong? And it's not liberals. It's regular Americans. It's just regular Americans. It's not like, the, uh, you know, uh, Travis Kelsey and... Uh, and uh, Taylor Swift are the favorite of the woke crowd. They're the favorite of average Americans, the people who go to their shows. People who go to their shows are not, are not the, 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 the crazy left. They're just regular people. People who watch the Super Bowl, believe me, woke people, woke, the, the woke people don't watch the Super Bowl. They're not interested. They're, they're very much like the crazy white. They think football is awful. They're just regular Americans. So Scott Walker is making fun of regular Americans because they, they, they're interested in, in Kelsey and, 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 and Taylor Swift. It, you know, and, and it, it goes on and on and on. I'm not going to bore you with all of this stuff, but uh, when you watch the Super Bowl, remember, it is going to be rigged. So no point in watching... 49ers will lose because it's rigged. It's rigged. It's, 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 a, it's a psych op operation by the Pentagon. You saw it for yourself, even though Fox said they have no evidence of it. Uh, but it's, it's right there, right in front of you. You know, don't worry about it. And uh, this is the craziness. This is the nightiness. Um, uh, this is Owen Benjamin. Owen Benjamin is a comedian, so maybe, maybe this is supposed to be comedy. I, I don't know. I, I find it hard to, hard to, hard to it find, find it hard generally to tell when something is comedy these days or not because the world is so insane and so, in a sense, funny that uh, it's um, it, it, it gets it's hard to differentiate. So here's Owen Benjamin. Why would a rich, famous guy marry a 34-year-old woman? Because she's beautiful and talented and successful and amazing. I mean, is that it? Is, is it, you know, is the, I don't know how many, what the age difference is between them. It can't be that much. It's probably six, seven years. Is that, is that what's going to kill it, right? If you started immediately, 
and, and this is this reveals it all, right? Because this, this guy's obviously a conservative. If you started immediately, you might be able to have two kids. And she's publicly had sex with a ton of guys. Well, that rules her out. If you've had sex with a lot of guys, rules you out. I mean, I, I think attitude should be the exact opposite. She has experience. This is great. I mean, don't you want somebody with experience? In every other field of life, in every other application of life, you want to have somebody with experience. Except somehow, when it comes to sex, it has to be a virgin who knows nothing, doesn't know what they're doing, and, and God help me understand you people. Um, despite her wealth, she's very low quality for any successful male. Really, <laughs> it's a billion dollars. And in her physique, with her physique and, and the way she looks, give me a break. Maybe this is comedy after all. Just seems weird and almost like he's a gay guy. Why would a successful man want a middle-aged woman who's always on tour? It is, could it be because he's gay? Now, of course, this connects to the rumors about her being a lesbian, so that all fits. Um, and then he adds, where was that thing? He says, there's a type of guy who marries the 34-year-old train wreck who's always gone. He looks very, very gay. My theory is he wants access to Taylor's young fans. <laughs> um, and then probably on a more serious note, he writes, any mom is, is more of an inspiring woman than someone who's 34 and chased dick and money and now just dances for strangers and has no family. That's a fact, no matter how mad it makes you, don't make the same mistake she's made, it's hell. Really? Really? So as a woman, you can't choose not to have kids and be super successful and be admired for being successful? Any mom is better? Any mom is more inspiring? Sorry, Owen. I mean, assuming you're not just kidding, maybe you're just kidding, but sorry, Owen, you're pathetic and, and you conservatives are pathetic holding these kind of views. It just is sad, uh, a statement in the 21st century uh, for people to hold these views. All right, so what's going on here? Uh, well, a, a bunch of things are going on here. One is, uh, look, the reality is uh, that Trump has drawn out the wackiest, craziest, most insane people uh, 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 on the right, and he's mainstreamed them. He's given them a voice because he's wacky, crazy, insane. And he's likely to repeat these. When, when, when Taylor Swift endorses Biden, he's likely to repeat some of these crazy ideas. He's made it legit. He's made it okay. We've elected to Congress after all. Uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene, and she's one of Trump's favorites, you know, with Jews and space lasers and all kinds of stuff. We've uh, legitimized all kinds of crazy conspiracy theories. We've voted, you know, uh, what's her name, Bobbitt. Uh, we've voted people like that into Congress. She probably won't be coming back to Congress after the next election. But we did vote her into Congress in spite of the fact that she held some of the most insane, crazy conspiracy theories. Now, again, you've got the same thing on the left. The left has these people as well. But the president of the United States doesn't embrace those theories. Indeed, they land up criticizing the president of the United States quite a bit. But Trump has embraced the crazy. He's part of the crazy. He encourages the crazy. And his next administration is probably going to be filled with some of these crazy. Now, it's also true, and you have to grant this, that there's a massive monetary incentive just like there is with uh, vaccine efficacy denial, there's a massive monetary incentive to say crazy things that go viral, to be at the cutting edge of stupidity. Social media has made this possible so that you have a lot of right-wing pundits who are just, you know, as Jesse Waters just really believes this, or is this his ploy to try to capture more of Tucker Carlson's followers? Is the game here really just to get clicks, just to get followers? 
so you've got an overlap of a of a of of, of, of real you know wackos, and then people trying to get followers, and then on top of that, you've got people who want to gain attention, uh, you, you know, and 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 again, mimicking Trump. Trump is all about attention. I mean, what is Vivek entering into this? Vivek, because Vivek wants to be cool. He wants to be among the cool kids. And the cool kids in the Republican Party right now are the stupid kids, are the dumb kids. Oh, did I say the cutting edge of stupidity? I don't know who said the cutting edge of stupidity. Are you, are you citing me or somebody else said that? Because I don't remember saying it. But the cutting edge of stupidity really is a good, good uh, it's a good phrase. And it fits the modern day, uh, right now, 2024 Republican Party. Cutting edge of stupidity. There is also a, a wing of the Republican Party and again, it's, it's a stupid wing, but it exists, of just paranoid people. People who are convinced, at least I think so, I think they're convinced, unless it's all a show, that, that the world really end. I mean, there was Flight 93, that was serious, right? If, if we don't elect Trump, it's the end. It, the world is finished, we're all dead. If we re-elect Biden, he's gonna come after all of us. We're gonna be arrested, we're gonna go to jail. There is this real paranoia among this fringe in the Republican Party, uh, and, and it's, it's, it's everywhere. And if you consider that paranoia, then, whoa, it, it could very well be, it could very well be that, uh, that the Pentagon has unleashed Taylor Swift on us as a secret weapon to try to manipulate the election and get it, everybody to vote for Biden. I mean, it's amazing to me how people who generally don't think the government is that sophisticated and able, or at least never used to, now think that the government is all powerful. That they can pull off a psych op like this. That they can fool millions and millions of people around the world. Wow. I mean, that's amazing. And of course, what this all is leading to is really, I think, the collapse of the Republican Party. The Republican Party is a party of losers right now. It should have won the Senate last election, but it chose as its candidates people who are wacky, crazy, losers. Dr. Oz. They chose as House members. They should have won the House, if you remember the, the predictions about winning the House, where well, they were going to win the House by 40 members, 50 maybe. Do you remember the, the, the red wave? They were going to take the Senate and dominate the House. They didn't. Why? Because most Americans like Taylor Swift. Most Americans just think she's fun. Most Americans love the Super Bowl, and they don't think it's rigged. And they don't care what Travis Kelsey's political views are. They really don't. I mean, as long as he's not taking a knee, but even when they take the knee, people still watch football. They just want to see a good game. And the fact that he's good looking and she's successful and good looking, hey, they make a cute American couple. And people love that. So uh, this, is a, this is suicide for the Republican Party. And, it's, and they're in suicide mode. There's no question about that. They are letting the wackiest people go out there and represent them. And because it's on Fox, and become people like Vivek and, and, and Scott Walker amplify this, it doesn't seem like it's just the crazy, wacky people. It's not just Lava Luna or whatever she's called. It seems like more reasonable people are picking up on this. And it's these crazies. These crazies that are being inspired, motivated, and emboldened by Donald Trump that are destroying 
you know, what was a political party? Not a great political party. I was always critical of them, but at least something. Now there's nothing. The best they can do, as we'll talk about tomorrow, the best they can do is, is, uh, is claim that uh, now uh, Zuckerberg is responsible for teen suicides rather than maybe the parents who should watch what their kids consume on social media. But no, Zuckerberg is responsible. The, the, you should have seen Hawley and, and Coos and McConnell and all these, you know, just beneath contempt politicians going after Mark Zuckerberg today and, and other, uh, uh, you know, social media CEOs. That's them at their best. If, if they want to lose many more elections, they'll do what they're doing right now. They will, uh, you know, go after abortion in every single case everywhere, including going after a doctor. If you remember a doctor that did an abortion on what was she, a 12-year-old girl or a nine-year-old girl who was raped and was pregnant, couldn't get, a, couldn't get an abortion in her home space. She had to go to another state to get an abortion, and they still went after the doctor. Yep, that'll get you a lot of votes. That'll get you votes. Or the woman in Texas... Whose, uh, uh, you know, fetus was going to die anyway and wanted an abortion because if she went to term, she probably would never be able to have kids again and the fetus was going to die anyway. And they f denied her an abortion in Texas. The uh, Texas Supreme Court denied her an abortion. She had to go out of state to get an abortion. And then there was some talk about potentially, they never did this, thankfully, about arresting her when she came back to Texas, they think this is a winning strategy. And then making Taylor Swift and into some kind of Pentagon ops operator or the NFL is rigged in order in favor of Biden. They really think this is going to win. Yes, it'll rally the crazies. It'll get make America a great nation. Enthusiastic, they'll love them. But is that going to get the independents, the more rational Republicans, excited to come out and vote? No.